All right, so what's going on, Yelani? We got another, the last Bernoulli one I'm doing. This one says, water flows from a large tank through a large pipe that splits into two smaller pipes. If the viscous effects are negligible, determine the flow rate from the tank and the pressure at point one. So this one requires a little bit of a engineering mindset, and you'll see why. Let's get started. All right, so here's the game plan for this one. We got this point right here. This was gonna be, it's labeled it here actually. It doesn't matter, P1. Well, not P1, I'm sorry, point one. Well, actually, hold on, we already got point one. Let's label this point zero. Uh, point zero, we got point one. Uh, we got another point here too. And we got a point three right here. All right. So like there's a the game plan. This is another Bernoulli equation. We want to find the flow rate um, in the tank. The flow rate is the same everywhere, right? Uh, it's called continuity, I think, or something like that. Um, the pressure, and we got to find the pressure at point one. So obviously we can't do that. Uh, we know the height. We don't know the velocity or the pressure here. We don't know the velocity we know the pressure and we know the height um same with this one we know the height we know the pressure and we don't know velocity so uh pressure right here is just atmospheric pressure it's zero right and this is also the case right here now we don't know velocities at these points uh we know the flow rate here it's an inlet and these two are outlets. So that means the flow rate at point one is equal to Q2, flow rate at Q2, at point two I mean, and flow rate at point three. So we know that's the case. So we got all three diameters at this point, this point, and this point. So that means we know area. So we could find these two velocities. That means we could find V1, right? A times V here, we know A for all of them, and we'll just pretty much end up finding velocity one once we find these two velocities. Now, we know pressure, height, not velocity, so one unknown at this point. Same with this case, we don't know velocity, we know the other two, so it's another unknown. We know all three here, so velocity here is zero, pressure is zero, and height, well it depends where you draw your, your reference, your datum. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, well, actually, hold on. We're gonna do Bernoulli from this point to this point to find velocity. Then we're gonna do this point, Bernoulli from this point to this point to find velocity. Um, that should give us these two velocities. We should be able to find the flow rate here. And then we could do a Bernoulli from this point to this point to find the pressure. Cause we already know velocity at that point and we know height. Um, so cool, that's the game plan. Let's go ahead and get started knowns right dealing with water that is a thousand kilograms per meter cube density right um i don't know if we'll need it but let's go ahead and put gamma of water at this point um it should be a uh, pretty um you should know this by now nine eight ten newtons per meter cube i don't know if we'll need it but just in case so let's go ahead and do Bernoulli. I'll label it Bernoulli from point zero to point two, right? We wanna get this velocity. All right, so point zero, pressure at zero plus one half rho V zero squared plus rho G H zero is equal to pressure at two plus one half density V2 squared plus rho GH2. That's just Bernoulli from point zero to point two. Pressures, what are the pressures? Here, pressure zero, right, atmospheric. Same thing here, it's a free jet, pressure zero, so cool. Uh, v0, velocity at 2. Cool, velocity here is 0. 
Um, velocity here, we don't know. That's what we're looking for. And height, finally. All right, so the heights, we're going to go ahead and draw the datum line right here. Again, you could choose it wherever you want. Just be consistent. Anything under is negative. Anything over is positive. So in this case, seems like we're going to be working with negatives. So the height at point zero, at zero, we're on the datum. Uh, the height at two, it's a uh, negative three meters. Now you're probably wondering, um, why is it at an angle? Does that matter? No, not really. All we care about is the vertical length. Um, how high is it from the data? That's pretty much it. So don't get confused on that piece. No angles. Um, cool. We could go ahead and start plugging in. So this goes away, right? Um, this goes away. This goes away. Cool. A lot of this stuff goes away. This goes away. Um, we're looking for V2. And cool. So it's just equal to this. Check it out. One half rho v2 squared plus rho g h2. And zero. Everything here is zero. So that's what it's equal to. Now, that actually works out perfect, right? It should make sense because height is negative three at this point. So if you move it this way, this whole unit turns positive. And then you'll get a positive velocity. So that's how you know you're on the right track. So let's go ahead and plug in density is 1,000 divided by 2. That's 500 V2 squared plus density times gravity. That's gamma 9810 times negative 3. Do some math, right? V2 squared is equal to 58.86. That means our V2 is equal to 7.67 meters per second. Cool, so we got this V2. Now we do the same thing at 0.3. So let's go ahead and do that. Bernoulli, zero from zero to 0.3 to three. Okay, I'm not gonna rewrite the equation, okay? Just uh, just the pressure. So P3, um, that's equal to zero, right? It's atmospheric. V3, that's what we're looking for. And H3 is equal to negative seven. That's that point, to the datum line. Again, it depends where you draw your datum line. We could draw it right here, technically, right? I don't know why you would do that because now you have two heights and got to do some more math. But in this case, I did it right there. So negative seven. If we do that, again, all the P3s, uh, everything, I mean, um, everything at point zero, the side, the side of the Bernoulli goes away. And all these are the points at three. So it's going to be zero, right? Because everything at point zero is zero. Um, is equal to P3, which is zero, plus one half rho V3 squared plus rho G H uh, at point three. Cool. So again, same thing. A thousand divided by two, that's 500 V3 squared plus 98, 10. Now this time times negative seven. So same thing. Um, do some math, right? Let's put zero here. V3 squared is equal to 137.24. That means V3 is equal to 11.72 meters per second. Cool, so we got V3 and V2. Now, since we have both of those, we have velocity and area, velocity and area, we have area. We just need the velocity. So we can solve for V1, right? Step four, um, the area, obviously we gotta find the areas. 
equals pi d squared over 4. Now, if you do that, you will get a1 is equal to, well, you got the diameters right here. So just plug into this formula. I'm going to go ahead and just write them out. I don't like writing times 10 to the negative whatever. So deal with my zeros. 0 0.00071 meters squared. A3 is equal to 0. Point, I'll move my hand. Give me a second. So these are the areas. So cool. I like to cloud them up just to make sure I don't lose them. Cool, we got those three areas. Now that we got the areas, we could go ahead and do the flow rate of the continuity. Um, so Q1 is equal to Q2 plus Q3. Remember, the flow rate here is equal to the flow rate at the exits. All right, so that means A1V1 is equal to A2V2 plus a3 v3 let's plug in 0 0.00196 v1 is equal to 0 0.00071 times velocity at 2 7.67 right plus 0 0.12331 times 11.72 so i just plugged in velocity three right velocity two the areas and solving for v1 i'll go ahead and keep going a little bit zero zero one nine six v1 is equal to zero point zero zero five four plus zero point zero zero three six do the math, you will get 4.59 meters per second. Now, I know I don't write the units. You got to make sure you do on the exam. You're going to miss points. I think I mentioned it in other videos, but uh, make sure all your units are properly uh, lined up. It's not kilonewtons. It's not millimeters cubed. Keep, keep a lookout for that stuff. Cool, so we got V1, that means we can find Q now. So Q1 is equal to A1 V1, right? We got area one, plug in, you will get Q1 is equal to, let me move it up a little bit, 0 0.009 meters Q per second. So that's the first part of the problem. There you go. Cool. So we got the flow rate. Now this flow rate, if you add these two up, uh, that's pretty much what it means, right? That's just the flow rate at point one. It's not the flow rate at point two or three, but when you do add the flow rates at point two and three, you will get 0.009. Cool. So now that we have the flow rate, or not really the flow rate, but the velocity. Now we know the three here, pressure, velocity, height. Now we know velocity and height. Now we can find pressure. So step seven. Let's go here. Bernoulli, last step, finally, from zero to point one. Cool. So again, just to reiterate, P at point zero, pressure zero at point one. That's what we're looking for. Velocity at zero, it's Velocity at point zero, zero. Velocity at point one is right here, 4.59. Uh, H zero is equal to zero, it's on our datum. H one is equal to negative seven, right? It's the same height as point three, negative seven. And negative because we're under the datum line, don't forget that. So to the Bernoulli, Everything on the first side of the Bernoulli equation goes to zero. So it's zero, right? Everything here is zero. Now zero is equal to one half rho 
V1 squared plus rho G H1. Uh, what else? Again, it's 500 times... Oh, actually, hold on. Plus P1, right? That's what we're looking for. Duh. Cool, P1, okay. So, almost forgot that piece. 4.59 squared plus... Ooh, I'm a little tight here. Let's see. 98.10 times negative 7 plus... Cool, fit. 500 times velocity 1 squared times 98.10 times negative 7 plus P1. Do the math right. I'm not going to go do all that. You will get 58136 newtons per meters squared or 58.14 kilopascals. So that's the answer right there. So there you go. Um, this one was a little long, but you get, just got to get uh, creative with it. Um, so what do you know at each point and kind of find a route um, to get to the answer pretty much. So that's kind of where your engineering mind has to come into play. But other than that, um, this could be a midterm problem or a final exam problem. Seems like it was at a good, uh, um, took a good amount of time. Usually my exams were for four, maybe, yeah, four problems long at an hour 15 for a midterm and then a two hour exam. So this kind of, yeah, just study this one. You should be good. If you know how to do this, you'll be fine. But move the paper up in case you can't see and we should be good.